So if you clicked on this video, you're probably one of those people right now on Apple's website trying to decide whether you want 8 gigabytes or 16 gigabytes of RAM. You're probably filled with a lot of anxiety and you're unsure whether 8 gigabytes or 16 gigabytes is the right choice for you. This video is to help you make that decision. So right off the gate, I'm gonna come out and say that I don't have the 16 variant model, but before you leave this video, do hear me out because I do believe this video is going to help you make that decision. Now, right off the bat, I wanna say that if you're thinking that 16 gigabytes of RAM is going to net you much more performance than eight gigabytes, you're probably going to wanna get a reality check and realize that it's probably not going to do that for you. Now, the second use case, or the most common question I see is, if I get 16 gigabytes of RAM, is that going to help me for longevity? The short answer is yes. The long answer is, but do you really need 16 gigabytes of RAM for your workflow? Now, for the college students trying to decide whether you need eight or 16 gigabytes, and your use case is using you know, the Microsoft suite, opening up a lot of Chrome tabs, watching stuff on Netflix, you're okay with eight gigabytes, 100%. But another thing I wanna mention is if you don't really know what RAM is, and I'm not trying to say this to sound rude or arrogant, but if you don't know what RAM is, chances are you probably don't need 16 gigabytes of RAM. As a shopper, I know it's difficult when you have options in front of you. And when you're on the website and you see that 16 gigabytes is $200 more, what can I get out of that $200? If you're expecting like raw performance, you're not gonna see that from your RAM. Now, from people who are asking in the aspect of, will this computer last me longer? Like I said before, short answer is yes. But I do want to put something else out here. So in Apple's newsroom, which is where they release their press release articles, and I'll have this article linked down below. This came out, I think, 10 days ago. When you look at this article, when it's talking about M1, Look up the word Big Sur and you will see that Big Sur and M1 are almost always in the same sentence. We also have to take into account that Big Sur is engineered, like they said, down to the core for M1. And even with the number change, which is really shocking to me how they went from 10 to 11, Big Sur is a pretty big shift as well. And that's something else that people aren't talking about. When you combine M1 with Big Sur, you realize how efficient mac os is i mean mac os was already pretty efficient with memory management but now more than ever with big sur there are things that used to take me 16 gigabytes on my older machines that somehow with the seven core eight gigabyte variant of the macbook air i'm able to do crazy amounts of things i don't want to use the word crazy because i'm probably over exaggerating but i'm able to edit like my 4k workflow no drop, no frames, but do keep in mind, I'm using Final Cut, so it's optimized for M1. Apple software has always been really efficient on the hardware uses that they're allowed to use. Even when you compare iOS to Android, even though we have six gigabytes of RAM in our iPhones now in the Pro models, and Android phones have like 16, even faster RAM, you still realize how efficient Apple is with their RAM, and that's because everything inside the phone or not everything inside the phone the soc or the a series processor inside their iphones they're able to utilize the hardware and the software to know exactly where to put things even between mac os and windows and people who have used both you can leave your comments down below but in my personal opinion i always find mac os just to be more memory efficient across the board there's not as much overhead running on mac os and even with this new redesign in um, engineering of Big Sur with M1, that memory management has been even further, it's more efficient than before, which is shocking. So moving forward, I do believe that, you know, the whole, this computer needs 16 gigabytes of RAM or it's dead on arrival is not really applied to these M1 MacBooks. With eight gigabytes of RAM, I do think that a lot of people are going to be okay. Now for people who do need 16 gigabytes of RAM, Here's what I'm going to say. You're more than likely a developer. <laughs> developer. <laughs> I would say this audience is more than likely developers or professional people working in the field. You're more than likely trying to build an application or you probably have a hobby where you're trying to create something that more than likely needs a lot of horsepower in terms of memory. And you probably know if you need 16 gigabytes of RAM. If you feel more comfortable having 16 more than eight, then more power to you, I completely agree. 
I would spend the extra $200 just to have that peace of mind that I have 16 gigabytes of RAM. You guys also have to take into consideration that this is the first generation of M1 and the Mac OS built for M1 or their M series processors moving forward. And it's only going to get better over time. These applications that you're running right now, some of them are still running through Rosetta 2 and emulating x86. And you have to realize that once it gets converted over to M1, memory management could be a significant improvement and it's gonna be using less overhead. But I'm just speaking out of you know my own head. I could be wrong. I would say that when other reviewers have 16 gigabyte variants on their channel, please go check it out and see what they say. You know, I'm really just talking from like a rational and logical standpoint. I don't have any data to back me up. Now, as a reviewer myself, I'm gonna say up front that I will be returning one of these models to get a 16 gigabyte variant as my personal machine, just because I want that peace of mind of having 16 gigabytes of RAM. I'm not really getting it for the performance reasons. If you're a person who wants 16 gigabytes of RAM for peace of mind, for longevity purposes, more power to you. I completely agree with that. I, myself, I'm going to do the same thing. Will some people say it's a waste of money? Sure, but should you care what other people think? No. I'm not trying to give you guys life advice here, but if you truly feel better having 16 gigabytes of RAM than eight, go ahead and do it. Not everything always has to come down to performance, 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 but I know a lot of people who are looking at these videos versus 8, 16, they are looking for that performance difference. Now, I will also mention as a reviewer and a tech enthusiast myself, I'm more than likely going to trade in my M1 laptop for M2, M1X, M1Z, whatever they're gonna call it, the next M processor, just because I feel a lot more comfortable being on the next generation rather than the first generation of Apple's laptops and you know, I'm hoping that they redesign it in a couple years. But if this video did help you, let me know down in the comments below. Like I said, if you're looking for a video which has full comparisons between an eight gigabyte and 16 gigabyte model, this one isn't for you. This is more just for helping people with, you know, thinking rationally whether they really need eight or 16 gigabytes of RAM. Like. I have people in my comments asking me, you know, I use Microsoft Word, Chrome tabs. I watch a lot of shows on um, through the browser and I'm in school. Like I said, you're more than likely a person who needs eight gigabytes of RAM. It's like my friends who come to me and say, oh, this person told me that I need an i7. And I'm like, I know what you do and 100% you do not need an i7 because I don't even need an i7. I just have an i7 because I'm an enthusiast. But with all that being said, guys, hopefully you did find this video informative. Let me know down in the comments below if this helped you make your decision. And as always, guys, much love. By the way, I'm on the website right now. Which one are you guys gonna get? Because honestly, it's a $200 difference. Keep that in mind. So, you know, $200 is a tough pill to swallow, especially when you're spending stuff like this. But hopefully you guys make the right decision. Thank you.